High corn prices aren't the only things on cattlemen's minds these days. Bull prices are also reaching record levels. And here to talk about the high bull sale prices this year and give some management tips is Dr. Daryl Wilkes, U.S. Beef Supply Systems Manager for ABS Global. Welcome, Daryl, to the show. My pleasure to be here. You know, these spring bull sales have been red hot. Is, is it an issue of just a lack of supply, or how would you explain it? Uh, I don't have the numbers, and nobody really quantifies the supply that's out there. <clears throat> I chalk it up to just incredibly strong demand mm -hmm. for uh, these really good bulls. And I think breeders that have been stacking pedigrees, you know, using proven sires, um, producing bulls coming out of cows that are sired by proven sires. So the, the customer can look at the pedigree and there's not a lot of guesswork left. And uh, so producers that are doing that and then obviously developing the bulls well and providing a good service package to go with them are uh, being very, very highly rewarded. And, uh, you know, to some people it may look like it's just a bonanza, but obviously their costs have gone up as well. And uh, maybe an offset there uh, it, to some extent is the fact that salvage bull prices. So the retired bulls that are being salvaged are worth four to six hundred dollars a head more. And the bull sales this year seem to be averaging five to eight hundred dollars more. So maybe it's a pretty good trade. Been a pretty good time to get rid of that old bull that you might have some questions on, no doubt. Excellent time, yes. Yeah. So what is a secret formula for folks that uh, may be interested in being in that business and want to provide uh, quality seed stock to commercial cattlemen? What, what secrets would you share? There is a secret formula. Uh, listen to the customer. Uh, same in any business, I guess. But looking back over 20 years of surveys that have been done with commercial producers, and you ask them, what are the most important things that you consider in your bull buying decisions? Uh, and they've been incredibly consistent. Uh, these surveys over 20 years, these guys haven't changed their mind. Uh, it, there's a long list, and I won't go through the whole list, but basically two key areas. Convenience, performance. Mm -hmm. On the convenience traits, calving ease. You know, nobody wants to pull a calf. Not, not because cattlemen are lazy, but they understand that if a cow has a difficult birth, uh, her lifetime productivity is most likely going to be impaired. So as soon as you get done pulling that calf out, the worst is still yet to come when that cow just never produces like she should. So calving ease is, is just critically important to people, which explains why a lot of producers, when it comes to breeding heifers, you know, go to an AI program, sure. uh, and then they go to the bull sale, and they don't mind paying whatever it takes to get some calving ease bull mm -hmm. that, will, uh, that they can use on their heifers for cleanup. Another convenience trait that I find uh, rising uh, in the conversations I have with producers is temperament. Mm. Uh, just the attitude of the bull. Yeah. We all know that calm cattle perform better. Mm -hmm. uh, that's been proven by research. We all know they're a lot easier to handle. But we get more and more producers in that convenience package, mm -hmm. cavities and disposition are, are kind of rising to the top. And then the other key category, performance. Yeah. You know, we sell beef by the pound, yeah. we sell cattle by the pound, so people want uh, genetics that'll, that'll grow. So as a, as a seed stock producer, if you've got cavities, calm disposition, and cattle that grow well, you're gonna have a good bull sale. You know, there's some people that look at bulls as just a cow freshener and others that really consider them a long-term investment in their breeding program. Yeah. Do you see a bull as a long-term or short-term investment? I, I think it's both. Um, if I turn a bull out this spring and he's ready to go to work, and I'd have no open cows or very few open cows this fall, bang, that's an immediate short-term return I got on that fit, fertile young bull. Mm -hmm. uh, next spring when I calve those cows, if I don't have to pull calves, there's a return. Uh, when I wean that calf crop, get a little few extra pounds, there's a return. Mm -hmm. So there's that short-term return that comes right away, mm -hmm. but the big money is long-term. Yeah. Uh, I, I look at genetic improvement like land stewardship. Mm. Uh, if you do them well, mm -hmm. over time the value just accumulates. Yeah. It's like money in the bank, mm -hmm. but the interest that it pays is a lot more than banks are paying these days. So you just build up that long-term value of, the, of your land through land stewardship and the long-term value of your herd through genetic improvement. But, uh, it, it seems we only have limited resources to produce beef in this country. Yeah. And uh, so healthy land and good genetics are two critical tools to optimize the quality, the production of high quality product from that limited resource. No doubt. 
So let's say one of our viewers has purchased that bull, he got the exact bull or bulls that he wanted at that production sale. What tips would you give him uh, relative to how he manages that bull once he gets him home? Yeah, good question. If you're going to pay good money for him, you want to treat him right. I think it falls into two categories. On the young bulls, be nice to them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're still growing up. Right. Uh, this is going to be a new experience for them. Yeah. I guess the, the key tip, and it's been around for years, is if there's any way you can do it, run your young yearling bulls uh, in a pasture by themselves without the big bulls in there. They usually don't get hurt breeding cows. They usually get hurt fighting with the old bulls. Yeah. Then the other thing that we see all the time are, are undernourished older bulls that have been kind of rough wintered. Mm. One thing that producers have to remember, and it's if they don't remember anything else from this, when you turn that bull out for the first day of the breeding season, the sperm cells that he's using that day, they began their production process two months before. So back up two months from the opening day of breeding season, if that bull was too fat, mm -hmm. which can be the case on some yearling bulls, mm -hmm. or if he's too lean, which mm -hmm. can be the case on some older bulls, uh, that cell development process hasn't kicked into full gear. And it needs to kick into full gear two months before breeding season. So the other advice is make sure those bulls are ready two months before you're ready to turn them out. That's great advice. Daryl, thank you so much for coming to the show and, and thank you so much for your tips. My pleasure, thank you. For more information on bull sale prices or bull management tips, just log on to our website at cattlemanthecattleman.org.